name's Joel Ralph. I'm the Director of Programs for Canada's History Society. We put on the Governor General's History Awards, and I'm really excited to be here in Goderich to help to recognize, interview, and meet uh, many of the team that put together the uh, 1913 Great Lakes Project. It's great to see the Community Award. The Community Award, this is the fourth year for the award, and it was really developed to recognize groups of community members and associations that have come together to let people know about their history and, and it's really not just a project about taking history and bringing it out to the community but about community members themselves owning and creating and that's I think what our judges love so much about this project was how many different ways that they brought history to the community and what a diverse and large number of people were involved in the project. That was something that was really critical and, and something that they loved and something I can see already from just coming out here. Well, certainly uh, I'm Mayor Deb Schufelt, and I'm here actually to uh, support the committee. Uh, the council uh, seen fit to put up some seed money to uh, get the, uh, the, uh, the event going and uh, the celebration of the great storm. And uh, certainly Mac Campbell has played a big part in tourism in the uh, town of Godridge for many, many years. And, and Mac, you maybe want to tell us the story of the Shelter Bay. It's um, interesting that I come up with the idea that in the harbor was a vessel that was used for the storage of grain in the off season, that the wheelhouse on that particular vessel was very similar to the wheelhouse on the steamer Godridge. And I thought, we can't take a wheelhouse off Godridge because it's still operational, but we can perhaps uh, find a way to take the wheelhouse off the shelter bay and to mount it so it would be a display of marine history um, within the community. I approached uh, George Parsons of the Goddard's Elevator and uh, laid out my plan and he said, um, I agree with you, Mac, and I think that we can help. So he devised a contract and uh, the stipulation was that we had to fill in the areas uh, that were left vacant by the removal of the wheelhouse. Uh, we didn't know how much weight there was involved in, the, in lifting it, but we had uh, an adequate crane that came and set it off the ship and moved it into position of a cement pad at the harbor and to be there as a continuing uh, memorial for the, all the men and women who had actually sailed on the Great Lakes and many of them came from Godridge. It's um, at the moment is quite uh, full of artifacts, marine, etc. that the museum agreed to take over uh, mounting the displays of all these items in the wheelhouse. Uh, it um, perhaps needs some work at the moment, but uh, that's something that perhaps our committee of the storm of, great, of 1913 could uh, assist in bringing the uh, wheelhouse back up to 100%. Um, it's um, every time I go by it, I think about uh, what's happening as far as uh, Godridge is concerned, the harbor. Uh, the fact that the town now owns the harbor and the uh, amount of traffic, marine traffic, into the harbor to the salt mine and the elevators is really amazing. And it uh, stands there um, as a representative of that harbor function. I'm Dave Yates and I'm a member of the Great Storm of 1913 Committee and I'm an enthusiastic local historian. Yeah, one of the more interesting dimensions of the Great Storm was uh, the recovery of the dead in the immediate aftermath. We tend to think of the Great Storm in terms of ships and men going down, but the real human dimension of the story is when the bodies started washing ashore. One of those bodies was that of James Wiley Glenn. In fact, he was the first body that came ashore on Mr. Turnbull's farm a couple days after the storm had subsided. And 
Mr. Glenn was a Scottish immigrant. We don't know very much about him. He was 28 years old. He was recently married, came to Canada in the hopes of uh, seeking a better life when he shipped aboard the Wexford. The Wexford in November 1913, it was be to his last voyage and he got tantalizingly close to home just within hours perhaps of making port and getting on the train and heading back to Scotland where he was going to bring his young bride back to Canada in the spring of 1914. Unfortunately when the Wexford floundered his hopes and his wife's hopes and dreams for the future came to an end and he washed ashore uh, just outside of St. Joseph's. His is the first body that came ashore and he was brought to Clinton. His uncle was the local Baptist minister in Clinton and Clinton gave him a right royal send-off, the best send-off, the best funeral that they could do in 1913 for this stranger and he was buried in the Clinton Cemetery. His grave wasn't marked. The family, the Wiley family, moved on and it wasn't until a hundred years almost to the day when uh, with the help of the cemetery staff, uh, the Huron County Museum, that we were able to reclaim Mr. Glenn's grave and give him the marker that he was missing all those many years ago, nearly a century ago. So one of the more interesting and poignant moments of the Great Storm commemoration was the recovery of the gra uh, grave of James Glenn, and we've been in correspondence with Mr. Glenn's descendants, who were very pleased that we were able to honor his memory with a plaque at last November. So my name is Colleen McGuire, and I acted as secretary on the Great Lakes Storm of 1913 Remembrance Committee. Uh, some of the other jobs that I did as well was I acted as videographer and posted regular teasers, um, little videos on our web page and our Facebook page to try and generate interest in the events that were coming up. These were short 30 second, one minute uh, spots with a lot of activity. The other great honor I had was to organize the memorial church service that would take place a uh, hundred years after the original memorial service in the same church that it had taken place in 1913. And as part of that we involved, uh, well it was ecumenical, but we also involved ministers from all the local churches and one of the greatest thrills for me was to look out into the congregation and see the faces of 30 descendants of people who had been lost in the great storm and as we called the name of the ships and rang the bell for each one it gave me a, a great thrill to see these people here and that they were aware that we were still remembering their lost loved ones. Hi, uh, my name's Keith Holman. My wife here is Joanne Holman. Uh, we're the co-chairs, honorary co-chairs of the Great Storm Committee. Um, our sort of main objective in this whole thing was, was the monument design, I would say. Um, it's something that we just decided to jump into ourselves. Um, and I don't know how much you want to hear about designing a monument. Anyway, I'll make it short. Um, we were trying to come up with something that when a person drove down the road, saw the monument, they would know exactly what it was about, which was a ship in distress. So um, anyway, I came about, the idea hit me one night in the middle of the night. Uh, I got up and, and did a mock-up of, of what I was thinking and went to council with it and uh, it just grew from there and uh, along with Joanne um, prompting me or discouraging some of the things we carried along. Uh, I think the biggest moment um, in the whole thing was when we were trying to decide what to erect the ship on. We had decided on the ship and the waves and so on. And we were just driving home one day and I thought, oh my God, we've got this pile of stone that came from the Victoria Street Church, which was destroyed in the, in the tornado. Um, I had five truckloads of stone that we were trying to use to rebuild the Colburn Cemetery pillars. Um, 
but we didn't have enough stone, but we did have enough stone for the bottom of the, for the cairn, for the uh, monument. Uh, this is all stone came out of the Maitland River bed, went into uh, the bottom foundation of the church, and then from the church to a monument uh, for the lost sailors. So it was pretty neat. <laughs> My name is Wanda Keith and I'm the Festival and Special Events Coordinator with the Town of Godridge and I had the honour of being part of the Great Lakes Storm 1913 Committee. My role was to assist with promoting and also coordinating with the town and I also had the wonderful honour of being part of the dramatic production of the Great Storm which was put on by Warren and Eleanor Robinson. I was originally in that first production way back when I was in high school so to be in the cast for this special anniversary really touched my heart and for myself as a cast member performing this story and having descendants in the audience and them hearing the story told live was just magical. In terms of the town it was wonderful to work with all of our departments who helped create this event and have it happen. The volunteers were wonderful and I know that the people that came from far and wide had a wonderful time from the lecture series to all the displays to the educational portion and as well just the fun times with all the music. So for Godridge it was wonderful to have this celebration and to commemorate a wonderful, uh, I'm going to cut right there, uh, it was a great time to celebrate but to commemorate a marine disaster but to see what else goes on on our Great Lakes and to know that we are the Port of Godridge. Hi, my name is Susan Freeman McKee and I'm a member of the Great Lakes Storm Committee 1913. Uh, my role on the committee occasionally was co-chair when our, our chair was off on the boats and um, my, my key role um, as the administrator of lifelong learning with the Avon Maitland District School Board was to bring the components of the job fair and the trade show together um, along with the art and historical perspective of the couple of days over which we ran the job fair and trade show. We had over 1,200 uh, people attend the job fair and trade show and over 50 vendors participate as long, uh, as well rather as um, music uh, from the, the, the time of the Great Lakes Storm, maritime music and arts and historical events. And we had museums there and it was a phenomenal um, two days with uh, very good feedback from 1,200 people. Uh, one thing that's come out of our work on the Job Fair and Trade Show has been a research grant from the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities, which we call Careers on the Water and Beyond. And we now have two researchers working with us on the issue of the looming shortage in occupations on the Great Lakes. Um, and we had the uh, fortunate uh, experienced the research of myself and a videographer just recently to go on the Algoma Equinox which is the newest uh, ship to come into the Algoma fleet and go from uh, Hamilton, uh, Dofasco and Hamilton to the third lock on the Welland Canal. Uh, we were greeted with open arms and we got to talk to the uh, all of the crew and we now have a, a video which we will post to our new website, Careers on the Water, which will eventually be a portal whereby uh, the major shipping companies will post their job vacancies. We will post the essential skills that are required and the training requirements for those job vacancies and job seekers can go to that website and the match, the labor exchange, will occur. So we, uh, there will be long lasting effects coming out of this incredible event and I'm very honored to have been a part of it. Hello, my name is Kathy Pletch and I'm the Descendant Liaison for the Great Lakes Storm Committee of 1913. I was uh, commandeered into taking this role. I wanted to be a volunteer and, and Paul, with knowing my love of genealogy and history, thought this would be a perfect match and it was. Uh, the rest of the people dealt with ships and the, the history and the storm and I got to deal with the, the mariners who lived and survived the storm and the ones who died. I tried to contact as many of the descendants of the mariners who had weathered the storm um, through newspaper letters, through social media, and uh, word of mouth. 
We had about 65 of them all together and almost everybody except for two families were able to come the, our Great Lakes Storm weekend and it was a wonderful sight seeing all of them together. There were uh, the captain of one ship and the first mate of the same ship having lunch together. It was, it was really a, a marvelous time and I really, was really privileged to be part of that. An offshoot of that um, was that I wrote the book Dear Ella and you can see the postcard in the background. Um, that was the stories that the, the descendants told me of their ancestors. Um, anyway, we did many things with the descendants. I think every one of them would say that it was a perfect way to pay tribute to their ancestors and they shared their stories, their pictures, their mementos and we all look back on it as a, a very, very special time in our lives. My name is David McAdam and this is my brother Captain Ian McAdam and I think it was back in 2010, Christmas 2011, I can't quite remember, we, we talked to one another and said we really need to do something about a remembrance function for the 1913 storm. And uh, I think it was the next year we met up with Colleen McGuire and some folks at the Legion, I think Norm Letty at the time, and, uh, and we kind of planted and began the idea. And then this committee joined a wonderful group of people and uh, the Great Lakes community in general joined us and it just grew from there. And that was, uh, uh, exceeded our expectations anyway. But I'm gonna let Ian say a few words because he didn't get a chance to before, so. Thanks. They, well, as again, it, it was an awareness thing, making everybody aware of what happened a hundred years ago and you cannot celebrate the loss of 260 souls so you do the next best thing we still move cargo the same way as we did a hundred years ago let's get the people that are still in that business today let's show them how we do it and how things have changed safety wise and you know radars, weather, weather maps, you know, etc. You know, we have all that now that they never had back then. So it's, uh, it was an awareness thing and make the young people realize what happened. So again, that's why we brought in all the school kids and stuff like that. You gotta let them, let them learn, so. I'm Paul Carroll. I'm uh, a retired educator. Um, I'm an honorary life member of the, uh, the uh, Huron County Historical Society. And I've lived here uh, forever, I guess. And uh, I uh, have enjoyed my retirement by painting pictures and writing books. And marine history is my bent. So I was excited to be able to join with the committee that was being formed to honor the remembrance of the 100th anniversary of the Great Lakes Storm of 1913. I had previously written a book about one of the ships that went down that's uh, talked about here in the museum and uh, the Wexford, of course, is well known in Godrich, and uh, it was sort of my introduction to the storm in detail. My work with the committee was really to be the liaison person to work with the arts community, uh, both visual arts and performing arts, uh, with the education system, and with the heritage community, uh, historical societies and museums and groups like that, and uh, help them get started with ideas, uh, which was the, the way we worked, was to plant seeds and offer a little bit of seed money from the grants we received to get them to initiate activities in their own communities uh, up and down the lakeshore and beyond, and to produce uh, their own uh, action or activity for remembering this horrible maritime tragedy that occurred. And it worked. Uh, we had. Uh, couple of art shows. Uh, we had two full-blown theater productions. Uh, we ended up writing and publishing two books, one about the storm in general and one about the, the, uh, the stories from the descendants of the victims on the storm. We worked with numerous museums, both uh, across the province of Ontario, uh, well beyond uh, working from Sarnia to Tobermory on the lakeshore uh, of Huron. 
Uh, we also worked with Port Huron Museums, we worked with the Detroit Marine Historical Society and other American groups, and we even uh, did some partnership work with the Kingston Maritime Museum in Kingston, Ontario. So it was a, a grand finale here in Godrich, which was the headquarters of the recovery operations after the storm, and we brought together um, hundreds of people from across uh, North America, quite frankly, including 65 uh, descendants of victims in the storm, and had a grand weekend here to commemorate the tragedy. And uh, it was highly successful, and we're being honored, of course, by uh, Actually, this is the third sort of big award. The first was recognition from Huron County through the Huron Arts and uh, Heritage Network. Uh, the second uh, piece of recognition was the Ontario Historical Society Dorothy Duncan Award. And this experience that we're going through right now, being awarded the uh, Canada's History Governor General's Award for Community History Programming, is a very humbling experience. Uh, we feel like we've uh, done a good job and we've had literally thousands of people involved in the commemoration and the celebration of this moment of our Canadian maritime history is really ongoing.